Yeah, start now, na. Okay, anyway, very good afternoon. Am I audible? One dimension. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, anyway, very good afternoon. We'll start. Uh, we are already late by 15 minutes, so we will not waste time. We will directly start with the topic. Okay. See, last if I remember, uh, we spoke of Silesia. So, Silesia we will try to complete. Okay. Before we finish Silesia, I just have a small uh, presentation for you today. See, as a PG student or from third year of your BHMS, you are introduced to something called as group character. Okay. So next few minutes, we will try to understand what group character is, why is it important and how do we study a group character at the level of PG scholars. Okay. So question number one, why group characters? We had this question even uh, when one of our uh, PG scholar was doing uh, a specific uh, topic, Lakshilpa is not here, yeah, yeah, okay. So why group characters? In general, to know about a group. A group. Okay, many but what? Many okay, many symptoms will be common to a particular group, so they have characterized it under one specific group. Fair. Anything else? Okay, uh, so the question is talking of the relationship. Okay, could be the relationship, but what is the importance of uh, studying? through group character. Okay, Dr. Vakka says material medica can be concise. Meaning not concise specifically, but what he meant was we have so many remedies. Okay. Probably this is a method where we can understand our remedies much easier way. Okay. Yeah, we will try to fit in a patient into a calcara group, a Kali group, Barretta group, whatever. So probably uh, this is a tool which will make our Metina Medica more simpler and more easier. Then, any other uh, importance of studying a remedy through group character? Mm, how, how is uh, your case taking going to be easier? Okay. So see, when you are talking of case taking and group characters, you will become prejudiced, you will become prejudiced, fine. So once you decide that this patient who is in front of you is a metal or somebody fat comes to your clinic, we think of calcarea and we start questioning in the lines of calcarea. Probably that could be a disadvantage of understanding uh, or uh, blindly following uh, group characters chances of you getting prejudiced will be more. Okay. See, anything will have its own uh, plus and its own minus. And as a PG student, you should be aware of everything. What we use is up to our discretion. But yes, you should know. Okay. Anyway, uh, apart from this, how do you study a group character? What are all the headings under which one has to study a group uh, characteristic uh, Okay, uh, fine. A straight mental? Yeah. Okay, no problem. See, yeah, you are on way of dealing. You can start with a, a mental symptom. Okay. Or? Okay, sphere of action, good. Pathogenesis, active principle. Because they will have common active principles. Okay. For example, a plant. Last time we were discussing composite family. So they will have something in common. Beautifully she had taken up composite family in the last class. So it will have something, you know, you will have to understand. See, I mean, this is not a must, but as a teacher and as a practitioner, I have, uh, you know, been doing group characters and I have refined myself and I feel this is one simple heading under which a group character can be discussed. I am subjected to changes, fine. Generally, we have a topic called as introduction. Under introduction, we try to fit in whatever, uh, you know, from where it came, the origin, 
what it was used for before, how did it get into homeopathy, the chemical part, the chemistry part, the botany part, the zoology part, the doctrine of signature, all those things can come under a broad heading introduction. Okay? Now once you are done with the introduction, many of you have got it right, uh, we can focus on the groups, common sphere of action and common pathogenesis, where it acts and what exactly it does acting on that particular thing that will become the sphere of action and pathogenesis. Very important because uh, as a practitioner which will be very recently, in the practice you will get to know if a remedy comes up in the repertorial totality, pathogenesis plays a very important role in understanding. Okay? I yeah, will see if possible we will try to take up some examples. We also have to look at the group's common ailments. Okay? For example, Barretta, Calcarea, Ophidias, they will have composite, they will have their own group ailments. We will have to look at that ailments from. And uh, we are also trying to understand not only ailments from, what is it that we are trying to go beyond? What happens because of ailments? Okay? For example, exposure to coal in calcarea group, what will happen? So we are also looking at the effect. Okay? So ailments and the effect, very important. And a very important as a PG scholar is we need to explore, explore the unexplored area and that is miasm. Okay? So it can be common to a group, for example, calcarea, predominantly might be psychotic. Fine? Okay? And few remedies in calcarea might have a soric tinge or a predominant citritic tinge. We will discuss that, I will explain. But underlying miasm becomes very important. Okay? And uh, the fifth part here is how do they look? How do they look? Like uh, Dr. Rantadre was talking of a metal. Fine? How is the face, the musculature, the build, okay? eyes, eyebrows, hair? probably a little amount of physiognomy also will come here. Okay. So physical appearance and we will also look at the mind. Dr. Minu was talking about this. Each group will have its own characteristic mental generals. We need to look at the mental generals. And then uh, once we talk of mind, immediately we talk of physical generals. Very important. Okay. And after physical generals, we look at a common uh, thread. What are all the common modalities each group has? Look at the modalities. And then we also look at the clinical indications. This is something, you know, is very important because I have always been insisting whatever theory you are studying should get reflected tomorrow in your practice. So clinically where each group gets indicated, that will become important. And another very uh, important part here is, see this is something new, but it's worth it and it's very important. What is that we are looking at here is, differentiate salts of a particular group. I have used the word salts here, not necessary, it should be salt, it should be the group member. Whatever group member comes under a particular group, you should be in a position to differentiate. See if it is lachesis. Okay, if it is a Ophidia, you should know when to differentiate each Ophidia. Hmm? When Synchris, when Crotalus, when Naja, when Crotalus Cascovella, or uh, you know the other, when Elapse, when Bothrops. Okay? So that clarity you need to have. So the last and uh, again important for a PG is all these things, if we substantiate with a case, it will have a better impact. So as a upcoming teacher, you know, you have to remember and I, as I just mentioned, we can add anything you feel I have missed, we need to add, I am open because we can work on it and we can make a better uh, uh, template. Anything that I have missed? Yeah, very good, yeah, good, see. I mean, somewhere we can also use relationship. Good. Dr. Sunil has a point. 
Okay, relationship. Fine. We'll look at that. I'll I'll try to add relationship. Anything else? Okay, single remedy rubrics pertaining to the uh, mind, pertaining to the physical general. Anyway, we'll be trying to cover it as and where it comes up. Hmm? For example, some ailment which is specific to a particular member of a group. Yes, we'll try to bring in. Hmm? Yeah, it's valid. Anything else? We are convinced about this. So this is how we are going to approach, you know, the understanding of uh, a group remedy. Hmm? So today I will start a group remedy. I use different colors. I took a lot of time, but probably because of the technical issue, everything is looking same. No, 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 no problem. At least we got something to, you know, take the class. So what I was trying to tell you is, I'll, I'll introduce you to one group, a group where I'll be discussing the physical generals in next 30, 35 minutes. Okay. Now before I discuss the physical generals, the group that we are going to discuss today is calcarea group. You wanted that? That's what you wanted, calcarea, okay, fine. So you wanted calcarea group, fine. So we look at the physical uh, generals or the physical characters of calcarea group. Now before you start contributing, what physical generals you have in calcarea group? My question to you is, why physical generals? Why physical generals? Okay, they are more reliable than mental. Okay, fine. I will take one point at a time. Dr. Vaishnavi says, sir, they are more reliable. Why is it reliable? That is something that we can see. Fine. That is something that is seen. That is something you can feel. That is something that is measurable. Okay. So anything uh, you know related to the physical general, it will have lot of value. And physical general is also denoting you as a person, as a whole. Fine. I am not trying to take you to the basics, but you know, physical generals, they are denoted by I, okay, and anything that is denoted by I is representing you as a whole, okay. I feel sleepy, I feel thirsty, I love ice creams, okay. So there is some difference between particulars and uh, generals. So physical generals, they are very important. As one of your friend rightly said, you can't, uh, you know, patient can't take you for a ride. Hmm? So the chances of hypothesis or the chances of misjudgment, all those things will be minimal when you take physical generals into account. Okay. Any other points you would like to add here related to what Dr. Vaishnavi is contributing? It can be? Okay, it can also be a confirmatory symptom. Yes, it can be a confirmatory symptom. Hmm? It will help you in differentiating. Okay, it will help you in differentiating closely related uh, remedies. Okay, agreed. Then, anything else? Hmm? See, we will also discuss mind. Not that we are uh, not touching the mind. If you look at the headings that we are planning to discuss, one important component of a group characters will be physical genders. So we are just trying to start with physical genders and we will definitely cover all these things. Hmm? Okay. So why physical genders? Yeah, they are an integral part of our body, mind and body and they are uh, something that we can also see. Fine. And patient can't bluff. Okay, and it can be confirmatory and it can help you in differentiating the repertorial totality. All clear? Any points here? Okay. Now, what all comes under physical generals? Am I clear? I mean, I am going very slow step by step so that you do not miss. We understood what physical generals are, the importance of physical generals and the danger of prescribing only on physical generals. Now, what is the danger of prescribing only on physical genders? The totality 
will be partially covered okay the totality will be partially covered so the mind the emotions the mentals also has to be considered hmm? so both needs to be given equal weightage okay so going ahead what comes under physical genders okay ha huh? okay sleep good appetite thirst desires aversions bubbles thermals yes ha huh? dreams perspiration good okay sexual affinities side affinity yeah we can club it under discharges if at all you have got anything particular or anything specific we can put it there so physical genders have to be explained under the following headings okay any uh, anything uh, peculiar pertaining to the group anything characteristic pertaining to the group can be taken into consideration okay now what could be the probable physical generals of calcare group see now what i what i'm trying to do is i try to tell you how to study a group characters and then we are concentrating on one component and that is the physical generals and what physical generals we have under calcarea is what we are going to explore so what are the physical generals in calcarea group okay perspiration good agree perspiration what else only perspiration okay desires they have got some specific cravings they have got some aversions yes okay hmm? their uh, sleep position thermals yes good their side affinity all those things we'll try to slowly explore now first thing probably for today i'll take two important uh, uh, what uh, physical genders i will try to understand those two extensively at the level of pg okay now first very important thing you know whenever uh, calcarea comes first thing you see you have a calcarea patient in front of you the calcarea patient would definitely tell you that you know sir uh, i am a kind of a person or the mother might give you an input that my son my daughter would always have this uh, tendency to catch cold okay tendency to catch cold see probably uh, i also missed two components under introduction diathesis and uh, temperament you know when we are talking of in general when we study the group characters in general even make sure you include the diathesis and the temperament okay uh, so calcarea is a remedy or calcarea group they are the people who are more prone for catching cold so what you need to understand is they are people small change in weather small cold small exposure small change in food they can easily catch cold now how easily they catch cold is something very peculiar in calcareas okay so tendency to catch cold easily this is one common uh, uh, you know trait you see in calcareas and i was just referring the uh, complete repertory where do you see this rubric under generals cold tendency to catch sub rubric so there you have calcarea fos the top calcarea which has tendency to catch cold any quick inputs why calcarea fos it's all there i mean why not see calcarea carb is given two marks and calcarea fos is given three marks one word what is that one word who are the people who are more prone to co- catch cold tuberculosis tuberculosis and you know calcarea fos is predominantly a tubercular background a remedy which has got tubercular background i know phosphorus 
but phos also catches cold easily or phosphorus also will have more of respiratory affections because it belongs to the tubercular uh, this thing right tubercular myosin though uh, you know hanuman uh, spoke of only three but anyway uh, calcarea phos so calcarea phos calcarea carp calcarea iod calcarea sulf are the remedies which are more prone to catch cold so there is also a sub group which was interesting tendency to catch cold easily in children hmm? they are many pediatric group coming to our clinic they are so very much prone to cold okay small ice cream small cold water change of water they develop a cold so one calcarea you can think of mainly in children is calcarea iod mm. and uh, slowly i'll try to take each calcarea and give you the salient features and how each calcarea has to be differentiated we'll plan and we'll take it up slowly now today physical uh, generals of calcarea see tendency to catch cold easily before menses there's a sub group given in a repertory and it is calcarea carp okay so people with uh, less immune power and who are prone to catch cold this is the first physical general now second very important thing which many of you started and what is that you all started with is perspiration perspiration okay so few questions for you and what are those questions the question is uh, is what before you take up the character of perspiration in calcarea we will also try to look at the other remedies as a pg scholar which other remedies come to your mind when we talk of perspiration shweta yes quick she says silesia very good mug good yeah you go on with the list then we'll try to i'll give you few quick rs of each remedy that you are trying to tell silesia mug good huh sulfur very good sorena yes chamomilla veratana yes correct selenium yeah palladium palladium c caladium okay so we went with p i was worried <laughs> because i did not know palladium setting <laughs> when you said palladium i was more worried palladium was still fine i could have managed <laughs> but uh, caladium i can definitely manage i am happy uh, thanks to your boss uh, okay caladium okay good caladium uh, thuja good any other remedy chatisagriya whatever you are told please remember <laughs> just telling the remedies randomly will not work few i have few we can uh, discuss okay lacasis good any other remedies jaborandi the more rare you talk the more i'll get the problems <laughs> okay sanicula good this is something i know i can tell jaborandi serious i'm not aware what i know is jaborandi is good for hair okay yeah good sambucus that is there in my list see anything that is there in my list you will see my voice <laughs> you will see my face uh, there is a smile and there is a lot of confidence in my voice when you say jabarandi when you say tukriam naram viram <laughs> i'll i'll go a little low because those remedies at least i don't know the perspiration yeah graphite is uh, my students they know <laughs> what this sir is other of okay graphite yes agreed fine so now we can have it as a small quiz kind of a thing so that uh, it will be easy for you profuse sweating which will have odor of garlic huh okay yeah see both the answers are right padmashri says atimesa vargare 
Vaishnava says, or somebody has said, Bhavishka. No, it's right. You said Bhavishka. Good. Now, how do you differentiate? Beautiful. I'm happy. Huh? Bhavishka, onion. Onion. Good. Okay, so garlic is not Bhavishka. In garlic, the uh, persuasion smelling of, uh, uh, like that of garlic, is more of Artemisia vulgaris. And Artemisia, you also know, is a very good remedy for uh, conversions. Fine? So, profuse sweating odor of garlic is more of uh, Artemisia vulgaris. Then, we will also look at another remedy, uh, Barretta. I don't know, Barretta did not come up from your side. Now, what is the speciality of perspiration we have in Barretta? Where perspiration, what happens? Very important. Hmm? Very good. Offensive? Very good. Where? Foot. Very good. Good. So, offensive foot sweat. Many times we all land up with uh, Silesia. Now, the beauty in Barretta, when this offensive foot sweat, when it is suppressed, they land up with heart complaints or they land up with tonsillitis. Okay, this is very, very important. So, a person had sweat, foot sweat, you give silicia, the foot sweat disappears and they land up with heart affections. The remedy is Barretta. Hmm? Okay, good, I am happy. That went out there, could, yeah. So, if foot sweat suppresses, what is the cause? That's what we just explored. Mainly throat affections, tonsillitis, and heart affections. So next time it is bovista. Okay. See bovista, uh, yeah, smell of onion. But very important for you is anybody who can tell me. Very good. In axilla, good. Perspiration in axilla, smelling. See, must be there is a mistake here. Onion or garlic? Onion. Yeah, onion. So we we'll have to change. Or both onion and garlic. Mix like ginger garlic paste, <laughs> <laughs> onion garlic paste. <laughs> okay, okay, anyway, we will just confirm. But from what I also remember, must be said, I was uh, overwhelmed with uh, artemisia. Probably the garlic has come up, so we will change it to onion. But please do confirm, it looks more like onion, anyway. See, Caladian, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, yeah, what is it? At yes, good. Attracts flies. Attracts flies. Okay. Only remedy? Only remedy or can you think of any other remedies? See, if we look at our Materia Medica, Caladium is what we all know. But if we look into the repertory, and uh, I have been insisting, this is the advantage of referring repertory. Repertory gives many more remedies. If my memory is right, it should be Calcitella, Setia, at least four or five other remedies are mentioned apart from Caladium. Caladium, perspiration attracts flies. Why are flies getting attracted? Because the sweat will have a sweetish odor. Very important, okay? Cantharis. Cantharis. Cantharis, we know it's a very good remedy for burns, urinary, okay. Now, characteristic of Cantharis is this. Sweating will have a smell of urine. I will talk to you about a better remedy a little later. Or can you think of a remedy? Sweat smells like urine. Beautiful, Dr. Vantagre. Nitric acid. It's a better remedy than Cantharis. Good, okay. Now, cargo wedge. Think and answer. See, I don't know how much time we have. Don't be in a hurry. These are all practical things. If you are not able to finish it today, we'll postpone to the next class. We'll postpone to the next class. So, pass on time. Huh? No problem. Power has gone. Huh? Yeah, sir. Thank you. Okay. See, we were uh, talking about carbo wedge and some issues with the power will manage without a PPT. Now, when do we think of carbo wedge? This is something you already know. 
use little of your common sense and uh, start telling me. When carbohydrates? When carbohydrates, what is the character of splitting in carbohydrates? Okay, see, carbohydrates, when it is associated with some disease. Okay, for example, you know, you have the cold sweat, cold clammy sweat. The sweating in carbohydrates is because of lack of vitality, you know, when there is a feeling that as if when there is no light, no, okay, that situation when there is that cold sweat, that is the character of sweat you have in carbohydrates. Sweating with asthma, sweating with dyspnea, sweating with some systemic disease, cold clammy sweat, think of carbohydrates, okay. Now, after carbohydrates, you have a remedy, uh, I mean, China. I will give you the remedy, you can give me the indication. When China? Sinkona. At least, what is it that is PQRS in Sinkona? Okay, more than that, one point. Huh? The sweating is debilitating. Debilitating. It will make them weak. It will drain them. Sweating is debilitating. And in Sinkona, the sweating is more oilish, oily sweating. Okay? And sweating which is more on uh, covered parts. Hmm? And it is more at night. That is Sinkona. A conium. Conium, conium. Very important. Conium. Hmm? There is something very characteristic. Three mark memory. Conium. Perspiration on closing eyes. Perspiration on closing eyes. That is conium. Graphites. Somebody has talked about graphites. Graphites. Again, it is acrid, it is offensive, but but stains yellow. The sweat stains the linen, the cloth yellow. A better remedy which uh, stains the linen yellow, lacasis. Lacasis, yes, selenium. There are some 20 remedies, but lacasis I have used practically in my clinic. Sweat. Stains linen yellow, like I said, okay. Uh, ignisha, how is it in Ignisha? Ignisha has got something very characteristic. Very good, beautiful. Where? Mainly face. Face, face. Ignisha, face while eating, okay. And then there are remedies like uh, Iodam. Two points related to Iodam. Iodam, one, there is debility and two, it is excoriating or acrid. A better remedy in which the sweat is excoriating, huh? uh, more than uh, silicia, more than murk, fluoric acid, fluoric acid, excoriating perspiration, okay. And how is it in hepar? Hepar, hepar. Offensive, one word. Now, when you say offensive, I will ask you the next question. What is the character of offensiveness? Then the answer will be like rotten cheese. Okay. Old cheese, rotten cheese, that is hepar. And moving ahead, I read remedy because uh, one of my friends was talking about Javarandi, a counter to her. Uh, uh, Lacnanthus. Okay. And uh, see, this is a remedy which will have uh, perspiration, perspiration over uh, the forehead, perspiration over the forehead. Perspiration over the forehead. 